Ecclesiastes 10.20 says, Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice, and a bird in flight may tell the matter. Ecclesiastes 10.20 We are not to curse the king. Now, by king, first and foremost, we are never to curse God because God is a pure and perfect being. He is all good and he is all loving. He is just and holy. And so we should never even curse God. And, and God is the ultimate king because we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And when we believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins, we can enter into fellowship with God. We can come to have a living relationship with God. This is verified by uh, the Holy Spirit coming to live within us when we truly believe and we genuinely repent. And as this occurs, we obviously first and foremost know that anything that happens in our life that is uncomfortable, that we don't necessarily enjoy, that is convicting, uh, that, that is painful at times, we need to not curse God through this, but we need to just trust that he has a plan and, and he has permitted this very thing to work out a greater good. Because just from, from what Genesis 50, 20 says, God is able to take even the worst of evils, and he can work it out for a greater good. So we need not curse the king. We also need not curse our leaders. You know, whether during the time of this video, whether you uh, enjoy Donald Trump or you enjoy Joe Biden, uh, wh whatever it may be, usually whoever is, is voting for one absolutely despises the other uh, within the current standpoint of right now. And, and this should not be at all the case. We don't need to curse uh, leaders and those in higher authority positions, w rather, as Paul declares, we are to pray for them. We want to pray that those who are wicked would be convicted of their sins and drawn to repentance and be able to come to know God. We want to pray that God would fill our leaders, those who are following and walking in the way of him, with wisdom, with godly wisdom. We want to pray for our leaders, and we know from Proverbs that if we rejoice in the downfall of of a person doing wrongly, uh, that could very well potentially God might see our rejoicefulness or our want of seeing other people fail. And then he merely turns his face from uh, the judgment that would otherwise have happened because of our sinful state of wanting to see other people fail. We should never want to see anyone fail. Everyone is made in the image of God. We are to love everyone, not everything, that people do, not everything that comes our way, but we are to love everyone as made in the image of God and wanting all to come to know him. So in knowing this, we also are not to curse the rich, not even in our bedroom. We don't want to curse or say anything bad about the rich um, behind their back or to become envious and jealous, um, which can be very easy to do. We don't want to do that by any means because even if we do, even if we do it in our bedroom, a bird of the air may carry our voice and go and tell the matter uh, through flight. And the reality is, is you know, especially with our phones and other things, you know, uh, you know, it's easy for people to chime in and be able to, such as the government, for example, and look through our technology and hear what it is we're saying. It doesn't mean that they're going to go off and tell the matter, but. Uh, pretty much everything we do is really not kept in secret, um, especially with technology, how it is today. We are being monitored, whether in visual aspects, in voice, uh, whatever it may be, and it's just important to understand this reality um, that there's always someone listening. Uh, and even if technology can't do it, we know that God is listening. And we don't want to be those who are sitting in our bedroom cursing the rich, saying they should give more money then they, they should. The reality is, is God uh, sees everything. He's going to take care of everything. And we need to be more focused about spiritual matters rather than uh, the things of this world as far as the rich not giving their portion or whatever the excuse is. Because we know that a lot of those who are poor, not all those who are poor, not by any means, but we know that a lot of those who are poor have brought themselves to that point and they remain in that way because they are very lazy. You may have heard in previous videos, I've talked about a friend who sent about seven or eight different applications in the span of 10 to 14 days to one of the people that was not paying him rent. He's a real estate agent. 
and he was loving enough to be able to continue to try and help them, they didn't apply to one job. Why? Because they are lazy and entitled and they think that the government should give them everything. <coughs> Likewise, um, excuse me. Likewise, all everyone who's rich is not narcissistic. They're not prideful. They're not, uh, you know, a wicked person. There are many people who who give their money without us knowing. Uh, you know, even secular people who give their money who are rich. Uh, typically, the ten percent that they give, if it's ten percent, is the equivalent of a thousand people giving their ten percent, or even more. Maybe. Uh, you know, 5,000 people giving their 10%. And people want, you know, the rich to give more money because, uh, you know, oh, they don't, they don't need a billion dollars to live or whatever it may be. But the reality is, is a lot of these uh, multimillionaires and even billionaires, it's not from inherited wealth. Some of that is true. But it's also from those who are willing to take a risk, to go against the odds, to go against the pressures and the stress of starting up a business. Uh, such as Jeff Bezos and um, and uh, Elon Musk, they went again against the tide and they took huge, massive risks. And through that, they have provided jobs for uh, tens and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. Sure, there's arguments whether the working conditions and all that are the best they can be. But nonetheless, people are getting paid. Um, not only did they provide jobs, but also they were willing to take a chance and many people are not willing to take a chance. Many people want comfortability and those who are comfortable then say that those who took massive risks should give up more money. Well, the reality is, is maybe the, whoever's complaining about that, you should take a risk. You should strive to, to do what they were willing to do because not everyone is willing to do that. Very few people are willing to do that, uh, let alone per, uh, be persistent and persevere through the tough times and the struggles in order to come out on the other end. Ultimately, we know God brings the increase, uh, but those who are willing to take those risks, they do have the ability to do what they want with their money. And obviously, who, us who are born again, we are called to steward what God has blessed us with. Um, and, and, we, so, and so whatever we have, we need to not compare ourselves, we need to not be complainers, and to curse the king or, or the rich because... That may get around, and if we are caught cursing the rich, let's say even within our church or within our job, oh, that CEO's terror, he doesn't deserve to you know, earn that much money, she doesn't deserve to acquire that much wealth, word can spread rapidly, and then we're gonna be caught in the midst of our own words, and it is better not to say anything at all, and also to be able to have discipline and protect our thoughts to keep us from cursing those who are in higher positions uh, who either deserve or do not deserve those positions. Regardless, we know that God raises up kings and leaders and he brings down kings and leaders and God is working all things out for a greater good. So may we trust God with that and may we not curse the king, uh, not even in our thought. May we not curse the rich, not even in our bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry our voice and a bird in flight may tell of the matter.